Now read it again. Al Jumla Tul Mufida. Al Jumla Tul Mufida. Al Bustanu Jamilun Kotafa Mohammedun Zahratan A Shamsu Tali Atun Yaishu Semaku Filmai Shemma Aliun Wardatan Yaksuru Nahilu Fimesa Barakala Fik. Now, can you tell me the meaning of some of these German? Bustan. Um, what about uh, Jamil? Jamil is beautiful. Ashamsu. Sun. A Tolia. I thought that was Tola. Like. Like what? I thought it was like uh mm, I don't know. La Adri. Tola Badur Alaina. It means to rise. To rise. Shamma Ali you wardata. You know Shamma? Shamma, um I thought it was smell, right? Exactly. The smell. The verb Shamma Ali you. What about Wardatan? Wardatan. Mm -mm. Wardatan is rose. Rose from flower. Now Kotofa. What about Kotofa? Kotofa means cots. Kotofa means cut to cut something or to plow something as to plow a tree or a flower so zahra what is the meaning of zahra those are, i thought that was flowers flower so cut of uh, muhammad zahra that means ali uh, muhammad cut a flower yaishu samaku fil ma'i alma you know alma water Alma water, a samak. Fish. What about yarinshu? Uh, mudaria. Um, of Aasha. It is mudari of Aasha. To live. So Aasha means to live, exactly. Yarinshu samak filmai. Fish lives in the water. Yaksuru an nakhilu fi Misr. You know Misr? Egypt. Naam. Fi Misr in Egypt, and Nakhil, you know, and Nakhil, Nakhil, and Nakhila to and Nakhil means palm tree, and Nakhil means palm tree. So Yaksuru and Nakhilu Fi Misr, Yaksuru means Kathir to become much. So Yaksuru Nakhil fi Misr. Palm tree is much in, this, in Egypt. Al Bustan means the garden. The garden. Al Bustan garden. The garden, Jamil, is beautiful. Ashamsu Taliatun. The sun rises. Shamma Ali Wardatan Ami Ali smelled a flower or a rose. Cut of a Muhammadun Zahratan. Muhammad caught a flower. Yarinshu samak filmai. The samak leaves, the fish leaves in water. Yaksuru nakhil fi Misr. There are many nakhil, that is palm tree in Egypt. So that is the meaning of that. You can see one of the benefits of this book is that from it you can get many new words. You can get construction of sentences. You can see how to say al Bustan and Jamil. Instead of you saying al Bustan and Jamil, you can say al Rajulu Jamil, al Maraatu Jamilatu, al Rajulu Jamilun, al Maraatu Jamilatu. You can say al Ustazu Tawil. So this is a this is an example of Arabic sentences.
So you can change Al Bustan and you can change uh, Jamil to have your own. Then Asham Sutolia, you can see that Al Bustan is a noun, is Ismun. Asham Sutolia, you can see that Ashamsu is also Ismu. That is one of the methods of, uh, of Arabic sentence. You can see Al Bustan is a sentence that starts with a noun. Ashamsu is a sentence that starts with a noun. Ashamsu Tolia starts with a noun. You understand? So that is Al Bustanu Jamil is Jumula Tunismiya. Ashamsu Tolia Tun is also Jumula Tunismiya. When we spoke about Jumula Tunismiya, we said the first one will be Ma'rifa, the second one will be Nakra. You can see that Al Bustan is Ma'rifa, Jamil is what? Is Nakra. Nakira. Ashamsu is Mufa. One is Marifa, the other is what? Nakara. So that is an example of Jumula to Nismiya. And that is an example of Muqtada and Khobar. Al Bustan is Muqtada, Jamil is Khobar. Al Shams is Muqtada, Tali'atun Khobar. So that is Jumula to Nismiya. When you now look at, and you know that under this topic, they are talking about Al Jumula to Mufida, that is sentence. Now, Shamma, and you said Shamma means to smell. And you can see that Shamma is a verb. Shamma aliyu wardatan, aliyu smell the ro a rose. Cut off a Muhammadu Zahrata. Cut off an is also fi'ilu madi. Shamma is fi'ilu madi. Cut off a is fi'ilu madi. Ya'inshu samaku fil ma'i, the fish lives in the water. Ya'inshu is fi'ilu al-amr. Ya'akthuru nakhilu fi misr. Yakthuru is also fi'ilu mudari'i. So from Shama Aliyu, Kotofa Muhammad, Ya'inshu Samak, Yakthuru Nakhil, you can see that they are all sentences that start with verb. They all start with what? Verb. And any sentence that starts with verb is called Jumulatun Fi'iliya. And under Jumulatun Fi'iliya, I briefly said, that we have fa'il and fa'il, the verb and the doer. So in court of Ali, Wardatan, Ali uh, smell a rose. Who is the actor? Who is the actor? The, the uh, Ali. Ali, you can see. It means actor means fa'il. It means you have the fa'il. Then you have the fa'il of shamma. The Shama is free. Cut of a Muhammad, who is the actor? The doer. Muhammad. Muhammad is the fa'il. Yarin Samak, who is the actor? Yarin Samak. Samak, fish. Samak. Yaksuru Nakhil, who is the actor? Yaksuru Nakhil. Nakhil. Nakhil is the fa'il. Yaksuru is the fa'il. Yarin Shu fa'il. Fa'il al Amru. Kotofa and Shama are fairly mildly. So these four sentences, they are typical example of Jumulatun Fairiliyatun. Jumulatun Fairiliyatun. And we said the component of Jumulatun Fairiliya is for you to have the fail and to have the fail. And sometimes you can have the mafu'olubi, that is the objects upon whom an action is performed. Why the fa'il is the doer, the performer, the actor, and the fa'il is the verb, the action word. So this is the explanation. And when you look at, after this, you can see al-bahth from the book. Al-bahth is all about explanation. And what they are going to explain in that is what we have summarized so far, that you will see that from the sentences, you can see al-bustan. You can see Ashamsu, you can see Muhammad, you can see Ali, you can see Asamat, you can see Al Nakhil. When all this one that I have mentioned, you can see Al Ma, you can see Zahra, you can see Misr, you can see Wardatan. All these ones that I have mentioned are names. They are Asma'u. Some of them are names of people, some of them are names of items or things. 
And when you also look at them, you can see Jamil, Tali'a. They are also like Ismu, but they are Nakra. They are descriptive names, names that tell us about things. Likewise, when you look at Shamma, Kotofa, Yarin, Shuyakthuru, they are verbs. They are what? Verbs. Some of them past tense verbs, some of them present tense verbs. You understand? When you also look at them, you will see words like fi, for instance, fi, filmai, and fi misr. So fi is an example of harful. Because when you are told about the aksamul jumula, that is the part of speech, you'll be said, you'll be told. That al jumula to tankosimila thalatha taksam. The sentence in Arabic can be divided into three ismu, name, fi'ilun, verb, or harfun, and what? Harfun, which means particle, harfun, which means letters. So this is what they have said in the explanation. You understand? So they now come with al qawai, with rules which you have to understand. They said, here they are telling us about al jumula in Arabic language. They are telling us that what is a sentence. And they said, at look at the screen, at rock kaba. When you say rock kaba, you rock kibu terkiban. Rock kaba in Arabic language means to mount something upon another. Rock kiba means I mounted, like if I drove a car, I can say rokib to sayyaro. It means I myself, I go on to that car and drive it, rokib to. But rokkaba means they drove it. How do you drive something? You take one upon the other. So a terkib means construction. Construction. When you construct things, you construct a house, you bring in the bricks, you bring the sand, you bring the cement and the likes, you bring it together to make a building. So they say at Tertib, construction, that is Arabic construction. A lady you feel do that benefits far either than a complete benefit. When you see construction of words, and that construction gives tangible meaning perfect meaning, complete meaning. You sum jumulata mufida. Any group of words combined together that give you a thought, that give you meaning, meaningful understanding is called jumulatu mufida. That is a beneficial sentence. You know, sentence, some of them may not be beneficial. For instance, if I say, Lam kuntu fil gurufa, it means when I was in the room. Does that make a, a meaning to you? If no. I say, when I was in the room, it doesn't give you a, a complete thought. But Lam kuntu fil gurufa. Alogurufa is a noun. Kuntu is a verb. You can see that that group of words contain noun, it contains verb, but it does not give us meaning. Lama is a word. Kuntu is another word. Fi is another word. Alogurufa is another word. You have four words and they make no meaning. But when you combine only two words, or when you have only one word in written, which may be two, a meaning, and it gives you a complete sense, and it makes sense. It is called jumula to mufida, and jumula to mufida means complete sentence. For instance, if I say, ja'a yasir, yasir came, it makes sense. Ja'a yasir, or Kodijaa Yasir. Yasir has come. Or I simply say, Jaa Yasir. Yasir came. Two words, and they give us complete meaning. 
Kodi Dahabal Ustad. The Ustad has gone. Or Dahabal Ustad. The Ustad went. It gives us meaning. Al Bustanu Jemilun. The garden is beautiful. It gives us complete meaning. So any terkib, and I said terkib means construction of words. Alledi yufidu ifada tantama, that faida tantama, that gives you a complete meaning. Yusama jumula tamufida. It is called jumula tamufida. Wa yusama aidon, and it is also called kalaman. So when you say kalam, kalam is different to kalima. Kalima means a word. Kalam means speech. Kalam means what? Speech or sentence. So jumula to mufida can mean speech or sentence. It can mean speech or sentence. That is jumula to mufida. That is one thing that you need to note. You should write this in your note and make sure that you repeat it severally so that it can stick with you. You see, at Terkibu Levi Yufidu Faida Tatama Yusama Jumulatan Mufida. Or you can say, Al Jumulatul Mufida. He at Terkibu Al Levi Yufidu Faida Tatama. Al Jumulatul Mufida. He at Terkib. Al Levi Yufidu Faida Tatama. Instead of you saying, Aterikibu ledi yufidu faida tatama yusama jumulatan mufida. You can say, Ali jumulatul mufida here aterikibu ledi yufidu faida tatama. I hope it is clear. Yeah. And he said, in the second rule, Alijumulatul Mufida, that sentence we are talking about, Kodetatarokkabu min kalimataini. It can be constructed from two words. It can be constructed from how many words? Two words. Look at our example. Albustanu Jamilun. How many words? Uh, kalimatain. Kalimatain. Ashamsu toliatun. Kam kalima. Kalimatain. Now, that's what they are telling us that. Ali Jumula to Mufida, called it a tarot kabum in kalimatain. A sentence can be formed with two words. Wakodi, and sometimes tatarot kabum in akthar. And sometimes akthar means more. That is, it can also be formed with more than two. When you look at Shama Ali Wardatan, three words. Kotofa Muhammadu Zahratan, three words. Ya Inshu Samak Filmai, four words. Yakthuru Nakhilu Femisir, four words. So it can be two and it can be more. Now, look at this, for instance. I'm talking to you, and I say, come. What is the meaning of, if I say to you, come, what does it mean? Um, um. Come. Come means stand up. What about if I say, call? Eat. Call, call, cough. Oh, um, say. Say. If I say, say. Is that a complete sentence? Um, no. no. How? We said it must be from It should be formed. It can be formed from two. How aksar or more? And I now said kol. How many words are kol? Wahid. Wahid. So can we say that kol? Is a sentence? No. When I said call, do you understand it? No. Does it make sense? 
Mm, yeah, yeah. It makes sense. And we said it is not, you said it is not a sentence. Is because it, it doesn't sentence? contain more than two words? Uh -huh. It makes sense. It means it fulfills one of the two conditions. It should be from two words. It should be from how many words? Two words minimum. And it should also give a meaning. It should make sense. So if I say pull, you understand it. It makes sense. But it is from one word. It is a sentence because in written, it is two words. It is one word. But in reality, it is two words. If I say cool, and I say cooler, and I say cool, what is the difference among them? Um, how many people you're talking to? Nam, when I say cool, how many people? Mufred. Wahid. Kula. Kula. How many? Uh, two. Two people. Mufanna. Kulu. Jama. Jama. Now, it makes sense, really. But it is one word. But in reality, there are two. If I say kol, it means kol anta. Kol anta. That is why you know it is one person. Kolo antuma. Two of you say kolo antum. All of you say. So there is more tomorrow. There is something that is invisible. You understand? So in Ferdul Amur, when you are talking about the Ferdul Amur, you have something that is mustatir, something that is hiding. Idhab, go. Idhab, two of you go. Idhabu, all of you go. So Idhab anta. Idhaba antuma. Idhabu antum. So that domir is unseen, but they are all two. And wa kulu kalima tunfiha tu addu juzu aminha. And every kalima that you see from that jumula to addu juzu aminha is a part of that sentence. That is why we, where we have part of speech or part of sentence. And in part of sentence, we can have the ismu, you can have the fail, you can also have the harufun. So would would khul be it's a jumula just not jumula mufida it is jumula to mufida khul is jumula to mufida but okay. it is one word but one word in written but in reality two words i say khul anta khulu and juma khulu antum okay so that's in only anta fil amr now, yes, Fenul Amur. When you see Fenul Amur, there are always two words, no. not one. But in written, it may be one. Okay. For no. instance, there is a verse in the Quran. Allah said, Idhab anta. Idhab anta. When Allah is talking to Musa, Idhab anta wa akhuka bi ayati wa la tanya fi dhikri. Idhab anta. Go, O you, wa akhuka and your brother. Bi ayati with my signs. Fa la tanya fi dhikri. And both of you should not relax in my remembrance. Idhaba. Now both of you should go, and it does not mention Antuma. Idhaba ila Fir'auna innahu taha. Both of you go to the Fir'aun, he has surely transgressed the limit. Fakula, kula, and both of you should tell him. Fakula lahu qawla layna, and say to him a soft word. Perhaps he might remember or he might be afraid of Allah. 
idhabi anta here he does not say idhab in another verse he said idhab ila fir'aun innahu tagha in another verse say idhab ila fir'aun innahu tagha but in that verse say idhab anta wa akhuka bi ayati fala taniya fi dhikri so in that place he made it full in two words idhab anta in another word he said idhab ila fir'aun and you know here when allah make use of more words it is for a purpose for a clarification idhab anta you verily you don't send any other person because now i'm sending two people then I made it clear to Musa, either have the anta. You yourself, you should go anta wa akhuka and your brother. You know, Musa stammers when he speak. And because of that, he requested from Allah in Surah to Toha that Allah fa'arusil ma'i send my brother with me. He said, Kala Rabbish Rahli Sodari. When Musa was said to Fir'aun, Musa said to Allah, Rabbish Rahli Sodari, O oh Allah, open my heart. Why Sirli Amri is my affairs. Wahlul Rukudatam Milisani. Take away the knots from my tongue. Yav Kahu Kauli. So that they can understand me. Wajali waziram min ahli and appoint for me a minister from among my family. Harun Ahi Harun, my brother. Ush do devi amri. And he said, You should make my matters very strong. So here Musa begged Allah to send his brother because Harun was very eloquent. So that when Musa delivered the message, they will not say, how should Allah send someone who cannot speak clearly? Musa said, oh Allah, you know that my tongue stammer. Then send with me my brother. So that Musa will not in turn because his brother is available now that, oh yeah, go and tell Firaun. Then Allah said, Id habi anta. you yourself should go. Wa akhuka, and alongside with your brother. It means you are the number one messenger. Don't debutize. You should go with the message, anta. Id hab anta. So mentioning that anta here, is to lay emphasis on Musa himself to be involved in delivering the message. But in our normal conversation, we don't need to repeat that domir when we are making command, except to make idhab anta ilal fasli. Yayasir, idhab anta ilal fasli. I'm talking to you, Yasir. Idhab anta, anta nafsuka, not another person. So that is what the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is trying to lay emphasis upon. That is why there is iqtisad Quran. Allah economize. They call hurufu ziyada, harfu zahid. There are some things that they call, does Allah increase? You know, we are, we are supposed to use three words. Allah will never use four. That is one of the miracles of the Quran. Where Allah is supposed to use three words, he will never use four. In the case where Allah use four, it will be for a purpose. Wherever Allah use ziyadatul al-fadh, ziyadatul ma'ana, ziyadatul al-fadh, ziyadatul fil ma'ana. In the Quran, increase in number of words means an increase in the meaning. You can see what we have said about Anta now. 
the domain is not supposed to be mentioned. You will simply say, if they have, it is understood. When I say, if they have, go. But when I say, if they have, enter, for me to make use of, if they have, go, you, I can say, go. But if I say, go, you, or you go, it is an emphasis. It is for a reason. So that is what we are taught. Barakallahu fiqo. So wakulu kalimatin fiha to addu juz aminiha. Every word that is used in a sentence is a part of sentence. So every word that is used in, in a sentence, we have a part that they play. They have a role that they play. So that is what they have said that al jumulatul mufida here at terkibu ledi yufidu faida tatama wa yusama kalaman. So al kalam al jumula they mean the same thing. Tatarokabu min kalimataini jumula is formed with two words. We call it tatarokabu min aksar, and it can also be formed with more than two, but they may, they must make sense. So may Allah grant us success. So when you look at all these examples, they have given us all this in order to practice. For instance, this they said you should read ikra al jumal al atiya. Read the following: wabayin al kalimat fi kulli wahid minha then you should explain every word from them. Every word in the sense that what do they, do they represent? Do they represent the ismu harfu of fi'il? You understand? Let us look at the first one. The first one said, asama'u mumtiratun. Asama'u mumtiratun. Asama'u means the sky. Mumtiratun, motor. You know motor? Raining. Rain. So, asama umumtiratun means the sky is raining. That is, the sky is giving rain. Al hadiqatu, the garden, jemilatun, is beautiful. The garden is beautiful. And you can see that those two sentences, they start with what? With ismu. So, they are jumulatun. Ismiya. Yeah, Ismiya. Then look at this one. Yang kote ul matar. Kota means cut. In kota means it has the ability to cut. Al matar means rain. Yang kote ul matar means the rain is not constant. You know, when the rain comes, it stops, it comes again, it stops, it comes again. You understand? Yeah. As sahab means cloud. As sahab means cloud. Yasir sahab, the cloud is moving. The cloud is moving. So Yasir is fairly mudaria. As sahab is fairy. Tatulu shams, the sun rises. You can see a sham sutole atun. Here the sentence is what is media. But here they say tatulu shams. Here it is fa'iliya because you can see fa'il at the beginning. Yajiful ardi. Yajiful ardu means this uh, the ardu, the earth is dry. The earth is dry. Al ardu. Jaffa means dry. Atairu. Atoir, you know the meaning of atoir, bed, fau mm koshajaro, -hmm. bed, b i r d. Yeah, the bed. bird is of the forest. No, shajara. of the the shajaro, the tree. Yakotifu ali yul azhar, ali you caught the uh, the flowers. Yala abu la gilmanu bil kura. The children are playing. Al Hilman, children are playing with the football. Yan Zilul Motor Mina Sama. Rain is falling from the sky. Tasiru Sufunu Fil Bihar. As Sufunu is the plural of As Safinatu. As Safinatu means sheep. Al Bihar is the plural of Al Bahar. Is the plural of Al Bahar. Saro means uh, swimming or moving. 
So the ships are moving in the oceans. Yashtadu al-bardu fawq al-jibal. Al-jibal is the plural of al-jabal. Al-jabal means mountain. Al-bardu means cold, cold. Fawq means on top. Ishtadda means to become stern, to become strong. Yashtadu al-bardu, the coldness is strong. Fawq al-jibal, on top of the mountain. So these are the meaning, and you can see that some of them are verbs, some of them are nouns. So that is what they want us to identify and to understand the meaning. Inshallah, when we start in the next class, we are going to start from here. So this is all about the Nahaw. And as we have said, one of the benefits from here is to see examples of Arabic sentences and to, to explain the rule that applies but the most important thing is for us to understand how those rules are applied. So may Allah make it easy for us. Hal min su'al? Should I go through that whole first part? Inshallah. No. Okay. No. And then um, um, uh, Qaf uh, Thani? No. I don't understand. Um, I'll stop at the at uh, the second. At the you mean uh, second of what? Ikra jumla atia wa bain al kalimati fi kulli wahida tin minha. Okay, okay. You said you want to go to the to which one? Uh, uh, and then I'll do all the way through two. Uh, yes. No. They said bain fi kulli al kalimat fi kulli wahida tin minha. Which one is ismu? Which one is fi'ilun? Which one is harmful? For instance, let me see. Atoiro, atoiru is ismu. Fauko is harmful. Ashajaro is ismu. Alhadiqotu is ismu. Jamilatun is ismu. Yankotu al-matar. Yankotu fi'ilun al-mataru ismu. So these are what you have to do. No. no, just for you to understand and to be able to differentiate the parts of speech from no. each sentence. So may Allah make it easy. Do you want me to write them and send them to you? Uh, yes, you can do. No. You should write and send on the WhatsApp. No. May Allah make it easy. Barakallahu fiku. My testim to the family. No. Salam